I'm Tina Gagan Parks and I'm an African wildlife photographer. So we're here in Addis Ababa and we just wrapped up our camera trap survey up in the Bali Mountain National Park. Getting into the forest, getting images of lions in the Harana Forest is very, very difficult. It's not an easy task. If it was, it would have been done already. We were the first ones to get film of them, we were the first ones to observe them, and the first ones to design a monitoring program or a research project around them. So yes, we were successful. Using camera traps laid out in a grid format in the forest is helping us as researchers discover more information about the unknown carnivores like lions, leopards, and hyenas that live here. From what we are seeing and from what we've been told by locals is that most sightings of lions are on the main and only road through the park. But our camera traps are some of the first recorded images of lions and leopards in their forest habitat. Whoa! Whoa! Wow. Wow. Lion! Lion. lion! We're finding out that they look different, they're bigger, and they've got these big black manes, really thick around the chest, even in the elbows and armpits and things. So this particular lion, we might be looking at something that is like historically never been recorded. At night, we did some lion call-ups. It was dark and you could hear all the different lions calling back to us. Yeah, that's the black mate. It took me and my team almost two years to finally photograph and film a lion in the Harena Forest. And most of our images were taken on the main road that goes through the park. There has never been a formal study of Harena lions, there is no DNA, and there are no findings that would help us know more about their behavior. We know nothing of their social structure, what their main food source is, how many there are, how long they live, or what size their territories are. Much is known about African lions, but nothing is known about these lions in Ethiopia. One of the most exciting things that we saw was a male lion lying in the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, pretty boy. It's so hard to find them that when you actually get to spend some time and photograph in the daytime, these Ethiopian lions, it's unbelievable. Come on, get up. Thank you. Ah, look at the belly, holy. Oh my God, look at his belly, it's like a sway back, he's so fat. Do you see how his tail's doing that? He's annoyed. That little flick of that tail. ones that are out in the wild have never been researched. There's no DNA on them. And the latest report we have was from 1913. In 1904, the emperor of Ethiopia, Menelik II, gave two lions to President Teddy Roosevelt. And in 1913, a naturalist from the Smithsonian, Edmund Heller, classified the lions as a new subspecies after recognizing that they had distinctly different characteristics. He named them Felis Leo Roosevelti, or what we are now calling Abyssinian lions. In 2012, lions in the Addis Ababa Ethiopia Zoo were studied and found to be genetically distinct as a subspecies through DNA testing. The zoo lions were most likely captured from the southwestern Ethiopian region. These zoo lions have black manes that extend further around the neck and chest than typical African lions. If the lions in the Bali Mountains are related to the lions in the Addis Ababa Zoo, are these indeed a new subspecies living wild in a high altitude cloud forest, possibly the last of their kind? How dare we not try? It might not work, but we need to try. We need to try to save the habitat of these lions. They deserve to live, and this species shouldn't just go extinct right under our noses. We're too far along in modern society to not care. They got the photos, the video, the sightings. They've got the research and monitoring plans figured out. Without the research that we did, there's no way to figure out what's inside the park. And if you don't know what's there, you can't protect it. <laughs>